Raz, that gun exists. It's the Cast Off 762, which is an AK. And I saw that and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Okay. But I remembered that gun having so much recoil that it was like worse than an Amex. But I said, you know what? F it. Let me try it again. For ad free episodes, as well as early access and bonus episodes, check out our Patreon. Activision devs do not play their own game. 3,000 devs can't figure out how to add a reconnect feature to a AAA title, I guess. I don't know. Because Infinity Ward doesn't Did you sell the core their stronger aim anything. assist than MW2. But it'll take some of the sweats away from yes. uh, Shoot House. <laughs> you can cope about that yeah. for sure. Thanks for tweeting, at least. Thanks for doing more than Infinity Ward has done. They just keep tweeting about the fucking the soccer bundles in the store. Things that are bad. We've, oh. got, we've got a couple words. Why don't you <laughs> kick it off, Tanner? We've got to. This is going to be a, a longer section than the first part you guys heard. Change it, obviously, of course. We are live, boys and girls. Welcome to the Drop Shot Call of Duty podcast episode number 349. Almost 350 episodes. Quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And welcome to the show. My name is Casey Elson. as Razanon. Today I'm joined by Tanner. And today... We are in fact doing an episode. Uh, what we are doing today, we really weren't sure about until like right now. Uh, we kind of wanted to. We were definitely going to do what we're end up we're going to end up doing right now today uh, at some point this month, which is a ranked war zone episode. Is it going to be observations? Is it going to be impressions? Is it going to be tips? Yes, all of those things. We're just going to talk about Ranked Warzone because that is something we've been playing a lot more recently, uh, particularly Tanner, but I've played some more as well. Played a couple games yesterday, uh, got off on a win because I was ready to eat because my shit teammates didn't want to start playing until fucking 11 p.m. So um, I mean, they had been on for like four hours. You could have played. No, because oh, I yeah. asked them and they didn't respond and say yes, so you're wrong, right? So thanks in advance. Because um, they had been on for four hours that morning, yeah. No, I messaged okay. them and said, do you guys want to play ranked? And they said, nope. I said, okay. okay. And then I didn't get on. Okay. And then later they said, oh, okay, we'll play ranked now. So it was their okay. fault. Yeah. So keep that in mind. And thank and once again, thanks in advance. It was, you asked them at noon, yeah. So, uh, yeah, 11 o'clock my time. And then they said no, right? And then four hours no, later, one, they no, asked one me your to play time. Ranked. One your time. No. Yes. No. Yes. Let me look. Let's take a look. I'm looking at it. What, do you think Discord's lying? I think Let's you're lying. Let's see when they got on. Or you can't uh, read. Yeah. They got on two hours later. But I'm saying they had, they had gotten off because they had been playing for like four hours that morning. One with the receipts. Yeah, so it was four hours later. It yeah. wasn't. It was I'm two, looking at man. Them right now. It was two. I'm looking at them right now. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I'll show you guys the messages if you want. I won't actually, but Tanner can okay. doctor some Whatever. screenshots anyway. Eleven fifty six to one fifty eight PM, however many minutes that is, that's how long it was. So if you think that was four hours, then I guess that was four hours, man. Either way, the point of Tanner not being able to count, notwithstanding, I did <laughs> yeah. play some ranked yesterday. And besides that, uh, we played a bit more ranked. I don't know when the last time we did a ranked episode was. I think we did two. I think we've done right when it launched. And then we did another one as well i don't know when that was we just did one recently i think that was the tips one but that was before this season too i think that was on patreon as well is that what we it did, was a patreon episode i think oh, you're right we did ranked warzone thoughts on july 27th yeah it doesn't matter we're just gonna talk we didn't really write too many notes down we kind of just wrote some bullet points about some things we've uh, noticed lately in ranked that we want to talk about yeah. So whatever it ends up being, it'll be that. If it lasts 30 minutes, we'll answer some Q&A or COD Q&A or something. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Uh, there's still, you know, we have a... Like like we kind of said in the last episode, we have um, 
a lot of good ideas we want to get into. Frankly, what Tanner and I had both been hoping for this week was to get some update to the game so that we could more clearly kind of formulate what we were going to do. Because uh, one thing that was possible was to get like a fortress blog post or it just drop, either of which would have probably been the topic of today's episode. And then we would have done a probably a little more in-depth ranked episode on Patreon. But yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter. Either way, today what we are going to do is talk about ranked. Um, one other thing I think that's different since we did do that last Patreon, I guess, bonus episode on on uh, Ranked, is we've started incorporating sniping signal use. Because uh, now I remember, it was definitely a bonus episode. One thing we had talked about was, oh, we should try the signal. A lot of people are using it. And since then, we have done that. Uh, Tanner has not sniped as much as I have, or as often as I have. But even if you have someone, even if you're not sniping yourself, if you have someone sniping on your team, I think that uh, feels a lot different than everyone using ARs. Oh, you know what? Let me write this down too. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So yeah, that's what we're going to do today. Uh, next week, we haven't, once again, we haven't decided what we are doing for the Thursday reveal event thing. But I'm pretty set on live streaming it in some capacity. Whether that means we play it ourselves and live stream that, or just watch someone else do it, I'm kind of leaning toward that, but I don't really care. Oh, that's it. Well, yeah. We have to at least play it ourselves, though, too. Maybe we won't stream it, though. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I really want to stream it. So if you don't want to like play and stream at the same time, we should just watch someone do it. Because like you said, it doesn't matter. I, I mean, we have to play it exactly one time, and then we'll never want to play it again anyway. And the only reason I want to play it is to see the reveal. You don't want to play the mode to play the mode. You just want to get to the reveal. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So, and Yeah, and we could just probably watch and we're And, we and it's going to be a 30-second trailer full of tanks, explosions, fire, and that's about it with zero gameplay anyway. So I don't know why we're excited, actually. Maybe we won't even discuss it on the pod. There's no reason to. Yeah, we'll see. It won't be anything exciting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just going to be the bullshit gameplay trailer. We already have the release date. So we like, already we're have the release date. Anything. It'll be beta dates, which are, have also leaked six months ago. So those are probably accurate as well. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Now, the more I think about it, actually, um, it's going to be like a gameplay. Tra it's going to be a gameplay trailer. It's going to be like a no, excuse me. It's not going to be a like gameplay trailer. It's going to be a cinematic reveal trailer, whatever the fuck, promo. We, Tanner and I are going to learn nothing from it. But an hour after it drops, all the lore nerds will be able to tell us everything we didn't see. So like, oh, on this single frame in the entire video, there's a picture of like a zombie with the ray gun skin from like Black Ops 2.5. And that means that the next game might have, you know, Mauder Toten in it or something. Mm, yeah. So like us watching it isn't even gonna matter. We're gonna just have to wait until people, the nerds come through it. So yeah, maybe we won't do it. I don't know. But the point is, if you wanna find out, follow us on Twitter at the Dropshot Pod, join the Discord. We'll post our schedule. We will have decided by Monday. But yeah, anyway, we'll yeah, it's not the topic for today's episode. Is there anything else for today's episode uh, that we want to announce before we start? I don't think there is, really. Mm, no. Got it. There is not. So, all right. Yeah. Today, ranked. Um... So, yeah, we have the patch notes here kind of for our reference. Uh, obviously, we're not going to go through those, but as I said, we've been playing a lot more ranked lately, and uh, a lot of things have changed since we last talked about it, especially publicly. Um, and now we're going to kind of just talk about it in general. Again, this isn't going to be tips necessarily, it's not going to be observations necessarily. We're, it's just everything kind of rolled into one. All of our thoughts, whether that happens to be a tip or not, you know, we'll we'll get into on a case by case basis. But uh, 
the only thing we've been playing besides ranked in COD is Vondel. But we've talked about that a lot already. So we figured it was time to get back into a, a little ranked discussion. So starting off here, there were SR changes in season five. And Tanner had touched on this, I think on Thursday, or maybe it was a little earlier than that. But basically he was saying after a ranked session he had played post SR changes, and the SR changes I'm referring to are placement matters more now. So when you, if you get first place, you get 150 SR instead of just 100. And that kind of, that trend continues. So placement just matters more now being yeah. ranked basically. And that could mean that players are more disincentivized to get into gunfights. Uh, and again, Tanner told, uh, talked about this recently saying he had a two hour session and like every team ran away from him the whole time. Uh, did that trend continue? Do we think it's a result of these SR changes where by virtue of placement mattering more, kills matter less for ranking up? What do you think? Yeah, I still don't know for sure. I feel like it is hit or miss, but there have been many games still where it seems like people are just wanting to run away now and it didn't used to be like that. Um, so many people running away and then you get to like a weird point before the late game where like before everyone was in a building too, but it was like they would kind of maybe push out or you would be more likely to get pushed more often. And that's kind of just like not the case now. Like say, like say for the super sweats, for example, most of the time they're still going to push you, but like there are, is far less reason for them to do that now. If they have like good positioning and they already have a ton of SR from early game kills, if there are like 12, 15 teams left, there's like not a big reason anymore for them to like go out of their way, drill charge and push your building and get and get their full kills and their downs when they can just stay in the positioning they're at where they know people are going to have to rotate to them. Uh, they can get down to late game where then you get more points when there are less teams alive. You get more points per kill, more points per assist. So they're going to pick up those kills if they just stay alive. They're going to get way more placement points. So I feel like all around it is it is going to make the game a lot slower, but it's still just like it's still hit or miss, I think. It hasn't been as bad as that one day was for us where every team was running away. Um, oh, another big thing I think is that is probably still the case on average in lower ranked lobbies. If you're in a lobby where like most people are like actually like hard stuck, real silver players, real low gold players, and they can't get over that ranking, they can't like get to platinum. Those people are way more likely to just play for placement, I think. Um, so that could be it too, because when that when that was happening, that was not a good lobby. And I think I said that on that pod that it could just be that. Like most of the players were bad; they were low ranks. To not just the bug where everyone shows up as bronze one. Like there are actually just a lot of really low ranked, not good players. But it's like I hit diamond again a few days ago, and I swear the game you hit diamond the next match. The lobbies are completely different. It is totally different. You like do not see any bronze or silver at all. You see top golds, but mostly it's like it's pretty much all platinum. And then you see players up from there. So I feel like when you're below, when you're like in platinum, a lot of times like platinum one, you're playing in lobbies with a lot of silvers. But once you hit diamond, it's a lot of like higher level platinums, like plat threes, diamonds, crimson, like everyone up in those lobbies. That's and good. in that. It's also more likely, I think, for players to be more aggressive because they that's just what they're used to doing now because that's how the SR has been the last season and a half since it came out. Right. His kills mattered a lot, so they're still doing that in general. Um, so I think maybe that's part of it, but I feel like lower-ranked lobbies, lower-skill-based lobbies probably are much rattier now and much slower. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, they've been... I mean, we've seen... There was one game where I think we died to two teams that were top 250. Um, then late game, we even Bandit and I random queued too with a random kid, and he was like gold two or something. We we uh, we random filled a couple times actually. In both of those games, we would end up dying to someone who was like iridescent. Like uh, one of the games, we made it till top ten, and then we died to an iridescent team. They were fucking cracked out of their mind. They had top 250 calling cards from last season. So like once you get to that rank two, it gets 
a lot, a lot sweatier. And then the lobbies are also less slow because of that, though. So, like, all in all, basically, I think the SR changes maybe aren't totally changing the flow of the game. It's not making it that much slower unless you're in the lower lobbies, which actually most people are. So I guess for most people, it probably is affecting your lobbies and making them feel slower. And then that'll, you know... That'll change things like your loadouts too. Like I feel like in those lobbies now, sniping is going to be a lot better because people are less likely to move. They're more likely to sit in a building, peek windows, peek a roof, kind of stay in there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if the matchmaking has changed because one of our complaints early on is that we were all fucking gold or whatever and like dying to top 250 teams in season four. But if yeah, you're not experiencing know. that anymore... Because you would think that, like, you would be just dumping on bronze kids if that was still possible. So hopefully they figured that out. That would be good. Just kind of a quick aside. But anyway, uh, yeah, when I played yesterday, I, like, forgot about the SR changes, honestly. Uh, it certainly didn't ha change how me, Jake, and Cope played. Uh, but I don't think it was ever going to. I don't think any of us really care about our rating enough to play, to, like, play slower for SR. Yeah. We're just not going to do that. Like, uh, like yeah. Um, but the games were fucking slow and dog shit, though. I mean, we only played two or three, uh, but they were... It was... It was... You know what it reminded me of? Early Moz. Like, season... Pre-season yeah. one Moz, where it was like... It could be really hot early game, especially if you go to a stronghold mid game is just fucking dead and then very late game super hot again that was my experience yesterday but i don't know yeah i don't know i don't know how much you can chop where were you landing wherever strongholds were i i think we landed fortress once um mm. we landed downtown fortress once. is never hot i've noticed that yeah there was like there were one or two teams only yeah. The, yeah. We only go fortress if there is a stronghold. I've been to fortress probably five, six times in the last couple weeks playing ranked. Every game, there is a max of two teams that will land at the fortress somewhere. A max of two teams. Yeah. Usually it's one other team or no one. Yeah. It's very interesting. So there's a tip if you guys, if there's a stronghold there, even if it's like, probably not if it's the closest one, but I feel like usually if the plane's going through the middle of the map, and the strongholds are like Ronin or like Oilfield, Said City, Seraph Bay, Al Sharim Pass, something like that. People are way less likely to go all the way to Fortress. So if you're struggling off Rip, if you see Fortress as a stronghold and it's not like the immediate hot drop, it's probably going to be pretty safe. Or you're only going to have to fight like one team. Yeah. Yeah, that, do that does kind of seem to be the case. When you open your map, it's like... It almost looks like it's not even like on the map. It's so it's like, pretty far down there. The thing is, too, is rotating out of fortress is boring too. always because you never yeah. get in fights because you have to cross the water. You have to figure out how to get into Seraf Bay. Then you get in and another team's already on a roof. So it is just always boring. Like fortress, you can get set up really well, but you always get a boring shit star and you're never going to get kills. That's true, too. And part of the problem is, like you said, the really the only place you go from there is Seraph Bay. That's the only, or outside of the map. I mean, those are your options. And rotating yeah. into Seraph Bay, like either there's no one in Seraph Bay, in which case, yeah, you just need to keep moving, and you're like bored, and you've already been bored. Or there are teams there, and Seraph Bay is a miserable POI to be fighting some team that's already set up there at. A ton of buildings. Uh, it's a terrible, awful ground war map. Terrible, awful POI. Not fun, not interesting, not good, not exciting. Uh, one of the worst POIs <laughs> on the map. Well, settle fact. down. It's bad. It's really it's, bad. It's funny you're saying that because I was going to actually talk about how we've been landing Seraph Bay and liking it a lot. Really? So it's funny that you're shit talking it right now. Yeah. There's the uh, one building. I, we can just I like get into that now. Are we done talking about SR then? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I so like there's the one what building? building in Seraph Bay where that stronghold can be the tallest one. The tall one on, on the east side of Seraph Bay. On the east side, yes. Okay. I like that area. That's all. 
everything west of that can suck on my cock and my balls. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Seraph Bay, also, there's usually a stronghold there. Yeah. Uh, more often than not, we've been getting the one that's, like, in Seraph Bay, which is, like, the one you don't like. It's usually right next to a balloon. There are a couple buildings it could be in. It's rough fighting over those, yeah. But for some reason, Seraph Bay just has everything like the the balloon is always right next to the stronghold yeah um you could all of those little buildings have so much loot because it's a bunch of tiny buildings so there's like a lot of medicine cabinets there are a lot of boxes in every single little bedroom actually there are three strongholds in the area i'm thinking one of them you land on the roof and it has those uh it's it's the one like on the south side so there's like a main road that goes through seraph bay basically it's the one on the north side of that road it's roof in like multiplayer normally before the stronghold thing you could see in through the glass like it's like it like goes to a little peak and you can shoot in through the glass and jump in there but when it's a stronghold that's all like boarded up or okay. it's boarded up in general now that building is multiple levels it's like three floors there's all the different rooms in there it's like an office building or something i think that's the it, only one i'm not familiar with i know the other two strongholds there so yeah it's the one that's uh it's closest to the buy station that's in seraph bay down by the water it's like that closest one so that building has okay. a shitload of loot in it so when that is a stronghold for example you have usually about five four to five rooms on each floor and there's three of those and all of them are full of money plates boxes so that is a really really good one um you actually come out of there with a shitload of money usually which is not the case most places and then also uh seraph bay has like below those on that sh on that main street right there there are a bunch of little shops those have more money than anything in the game those have more money than like gas stations all of it there's shelving units there's cash registers so each little room it's like the size of my bedroom and it'll have two cash registers in it like literally 10 plates in the room bunch of ammo stacks so much money so you get money really really quickly there that's the thing we've noticed so that's like um Bandit and I have been landing there a lot because we're liking that and liking how much money you can get. And it's funny because even the guy, you know how w we talked about the abandoned strongholds? What are they called? The fucking uh, the fake money. Ones. It's the money sign. Yeah. What is it called? Uh, uh, I can't think of that name. But anyways, you know. guys know what we're talking about. So we were gonna we were landing on one in said city, which is where the stronghold usually is. So it was that money sign. And even our random teammate was like, "Oh, we're gonna go there." He's like, "Yeah." I feel like uh, the the money signs like they never even actually have any money. Like you're better off looting anywhere else. And I was like, that's exactly what we yeah. said. Yeah. And this is just some random shitter. So even he realized that too, yeah. right? So we we do land there and we get that one white chest which has like maybe five or six thousand. You go downstairs to the bottom of that building, loot like two or three little markets right there. Immediately you have like twenty k already. So you get money really, really fast, especially in combination with those. Um, so I think it's just a good place to land because of that. Because then you can like immediately buy streaks, get a loadout from the stronghold if that's there. There's so many buildings where, if someone else caps the stronghold and then they get their loadout, you can either hold them because usually most of those buildings there's like one door in or out or like one easily accessible door in or out. Um. It's either that or uh, or you can just get away from them easily. If they start chasing you because they have loadout, there's so many buildings and shit that you can just get away in and just uh, and then they won't usually chase you because they don't know where you went. So I've actually really been liking Sarah Bay. That's been kind of our go to the last few times I've played because there's sense. there's so much cash in a there's small so area there. And loot. Yeah. yeah, it does make sense. I think the reason I hate it is also the reason why there's so much loot there. Which is like you said, there are a million buildings in a million rooms. So there's just so much goddamn money to be found. Yeah. Uh -huh. But by virtue of there being a million buildings in a million rooms, it's fucking miserable to get in a gunfight there. Because, yeah, like if someone breaks line of sight, they're gone. You're never going to find them. Like they could have gone in any one of a thousand rooms on a thousand levels. So it's like, okay, cool. I. That person just disappeared forever. And you could use that, of course, to your advantage, like you said. There also is the gas station there, too, by the way. So, you know, there's a gas those, station. Like, oh, yeah. Or whatever are looted, you can just go to the gas station instead, or vice versa. Because the gas station, all the gas stations also 
have twenty thousand dollars in them by themselves and a hundred thousand plates and ammo and loadout guns they're not but yeah. they might as well be i they're the best thing <laughs> to loot uh so yeah that all does make sense i just i just hate fighting there but yeah i think you're just scarred spot, from ground war because it sucks in ground war like all the ground war maps do in this war. game yeah but when there are not 60 people right there it's very fun. often it, that, that balloon about. is like always there yeah. yeah and then right next to the gas station there's the ammo refill building which also has a ton mm. of loot and i've noticed that building that type of building where like the ammo refills in kind of like a little like an open area down below and mm. then the upstairs of that building is also it's all like open like the open square those building, buildings yeah are like primarily uh resurgence chests so then you keep getting loot from those if you stay mm. in that area too so that's like the other thing about certain pois is like places like rohan oil or like tarak they have a lot of duffel bags and a lot of chests but definitely there are areas and pois that have more resurgence chests and seraph bay seems to be one of those so you can like keep getting loot and you know seraph bay is kind of one of those places too where if the circle's landing anywhere on the south side of the map, it's going to be in for a long time, and people will be coming there, because that's going to be, like, the hottest POI in that area, too. Because there's going to be the buy, the balloon. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so many buildings, so people end up flooding to it, because where else are you going to go? in terms of it east is. west so. Yeah, because airport's too far, fortress is an island, cemetery's nothing, Sawa Village is dog shit. So it's like people really start going to Sarah Bay. So if you land there and then fight teams there the whole game you have the best positioning and you can kind of hold people coming in or you're on that roof then so yeah i've been liking it a lot actually that's interesting when you guys land there do you normally just like buy loadout and then leave or do you like to stay there kind of depends usually we'll pop a uav if we don't see anyone or like usually we'll start seeing people on the edge of like cemetery sawa village and we'll start going that way um you usually just like avoid Octar Village. I hate Octar Village. That is the worst, one of the worst POIs on the map. That whole area fucking sucks. So I don't like rotating up there. But usually we go like west, sometimes towards airport or something. But usually there are like enough teams spread out that you can kind of just fight there the whole time and then more teams keep coming in. Actar does suck balls, by the way. Actar fucking blows, yeah. If it's what I'm thinking of, which I think it is, yeah. We have the map um, up the top. Look at it. It's the it's the one down next to observatory. It's the worst. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's interesting. That's interesting. But yeah, so I think that's a pretty good uh pretty good place to land too, and that's good too if you're you know if you struggle off rip like I was saying about fortress. Um, a lot of buildings to get away in if you're getting yeah, chased exactly. and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point too a lot about of money like to hot regain. dropping. Because that, like, that's one of the problems with dropping, like, Rohan, for example. I really like Rohan, but... I do, too. If you get in a gunfight with, like, another team, and they pick one or two of you, or they got better ground loot or whatever, you're disadvantaged in, for some reason. You're not getting away from them. Like, they're, they're going to see where you go, and they'll be able to find you every time. And you can't just run to a different POI, either. It's too open. So if like there are three people hunting you at Rohan, you can't le you can't escape. You're dead. They you just can't. There's not enough cover. There aren't enough buildings. There's way too good of line of sight. You're not going to yeah. be able to get out. But at Seraph Bay, yeah, like you could team wipe my team in the next room, literally, and there's a good chance I can just escape. Actually. Uh -huh. So jump yeah, off that, roofs jump out of yeah, yeah a lot of things you can do like dip into this building dip out of that building climb up one level jump back out like yeah it's impossible so that does kind of make sense in terms of uh hot dropping or, or dropping initially drop spots yeah because yeah. that, that's something like with the flatter pois rohan tarak village yeah if you know a team is there and you like kill one of them off rip and we get the strongholds we have loadout I'm not stopping chasing those guys until we kill them. Because you know they can only go so far because they can't jump off yeah, a roof and float away. Exactly. The balloons are so spread out. You can see the balloon from far away. And you'll see where um, they're Because it's a flat POI. Yeah, so like places that are more vertical as well and have a lot of buildings, you know, you can get away. Yeah. But yeah, that does end up going both ways where sometimes you lose teams you're chasing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Interesting though. Yeah. And, and with placement mattering more now... That makes Sarah Bay more attractive because if you yeah. land there, you're less likely to get team wiped. 
um right away you know yeah so, for sure anyway um moving on next little point here dropping player count to 120 or so is this uh tell yeah, us about so this Okay, so obviously in season five, unranked Maz, they lowered the player count to what they lowered to a hundred. I think it was about a hundred or so. And they changed the circle pacing. So the first circle is smaller, gas comes in quicker. The circles, there's not as much time between circles, I believe. Um, all of that. And so let me actually see exactly what they did. Let me search circle here. Uh, so they dropped the player count to 100, yeah. So circle timing, yeah. So the the first gas starts moving in now at 90 seconds. It used to be 220. Uh, it closes now at 215 seconds. It used to be 270. And then they decrease the size of the initial circle. And they had said in there, which we talked about when we went over these patch notes, like, uh, at this time, we did not make any changes to ranked. And we're like, oh, that the way they worded that, they're going to. They're going to make changes to ranked. Yeah. And so as we've been playing, I think it was kind of like Jake and I were having this discussion. Um, I think Jake had brought it up first about how they should drop the player counts for ranked. And then the more I played, starting to think about it, I'm like, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Because I think he was the one also who pointed out if they drop the player count, the matchmaking is going to be more strict, which is a lot better for lower skilled players because uh, they're going to be more in their lobbies. I'm like, oh, that's so obvious. I can't believe I didn't think of that. Yeah. So if you have 120 players, 110 players in a lobby versus 150, you are way less likely if you're a hard stuck silver player to get in a lobby with like even a diamond player ever, probably, or like a crimson player. You're just not going to see those people often. And then that makes also the top lobbies more competitive because those guys are actually playing against themselves instead of getting, you know, getting gifted lobbies at times and dropping 60, 70 kills as a team, which some of these guys do. So that makes that more strict and more skill based. Um, of course, faster queuing. Sometimes the queuing takes way too long. You wait there forever. So they're going to get faster queuing. Uh, less load on the servers, which has obviously been a problem. Yeah, Server issues, packet loss. It'd be great for that. Uh, matchmaking would be more strict, which is what you want for a ranked mode. And then another thing, too, is um, regaining. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but if you get wiped or like one guy wins the gulag and you try to come back and you're, you know, maybe third circle, good luck. It's yeah, so it's hard to starting, regain. Like third circle, I think you're yeah. just kind of fucked. You start marking buy stations. You're like, oh, I'm gonna go down to this one. You you drop a little bit, pull your chute, float around. You're like, oh, never mind. There's a team on that. I'm gonna go to this portable. Start going to that portable. Oh, never mind. A guy's on that roof. Start going over to this buy. And there's just nowhere to go. You just can't regain. So then you have to just land somewhere. Then it becomes boring. You're kind of just sitting around looking for trash loot, and then you end up getting killed to someone. So I am interested in seeing some sort of change to the player count but obviously the, a lot would come along with that they'd have to probably make kills count for more um they'd have to, so they'd have to change the sr system as well i don't know what they would do with the circles if they would have to speed them up as well because if they if they dropped it to like 120 i feel like 100 is too drastic to start with i feel like they should start at like 120 or something like what we had in caldera yeah drop it to 120 change how the sr works so i guess you'd have to get like what early game instead of five sr you'd have to get like seven sr for a kill and then yeah, late game just, when it turns like 15 it'd have to be like 20 or something they could do the math and yeah like, they could figure it out easily Yeah, they could figure it out yeah that wouldn't be so my big concern would be the mid game because like i mean i agree with all your points faster queuing would be better more server stability would obviously be better. More strict matchmaking would obviously be better. The capacity to potentially regain late game or even fucking mid game would maybe become possible. Whereas right now it's pretty much not really. Uh, those are all good things, I would say. The last one is like maybe good, but everything else is just like obviously good. Uh, but like mid game is, the, here's why it's complicated. The mid game of ranked is not always slow, but sometimes it is like fairly often it is. Yeah, I would say maybe, true. maybe like 40% of the mid games in ranked are like too slow for my liking, which is quite a lot. Uh, that's quite often. And if you lower the player count to 120, 
from 150. Unless they made other changes, like more flares or some crazy shit like that, then that would just become even more often. Uh, because the thing is, whether you have 150 people in the lobby to start or 100, the teams that are landing at strongholds are kind of going to be landing at them anyway. And like, I don't see it being the case where two teams were going to land at this stronghold, but now that there's only 120 players, only one team's going to land there. For example, I feel like there's always going to be competitions at strongholds anyway. So in yeah. that would mean there's pretty much going to be the same number of teams being wiped early game who land at these strongholds, whether there are 150 or 120 players. So let's make up a number. Five teams. Six teams probably would be more accurate. I think with 150 players, six teams are going to get wiped off rip because they're all landing strongholds. And I think if it was 120 players you would still be losing six teams off rip. Like that number wouldn't go down. And that would be a really big problem, I think, for the mid game, because then there would be way fewer people. Um, and that would make a lot of mid games, I think, more slow. I don't know how you get yeah. around that though. Well, that's also why I was saying 120 players, because in it's 100 and pubs unranked, and that's because they have the gulag entries um they have of course the reinforcement flares they have the redeploy pack uh and then they have the cheaper buyback prices now too yeah. so like that's why i think 120 would be like a good in between where they could also shrink the size of the first circle maybe yeah that would be a decent idea because yeah there there may be like six teams technically getting wiped off rip but Almost none of those of those teams actually end up getting full wiped. Like at least one person is going to win their gulag most of the time, and then that team's going to come back. And it's such it's so early; they just land somewhere totally different and start looting again. Um, I yeah, think so I don't right. know. I think making the first, just shrinking the first circle, or make the matches yeah. faster. Those kind of go hand in hand, or at least they could. I think that would help a lot because. If you make the first circle smaller in proportion to how much you make the lobby smaller, so 150 to 120, that's how big of a difference is that? 15 to 12? That's uh, 3 goes into 12. I don't know. Whatever. 15 or 20%, some shit like that. Just make the first circle 15 to 20% smaller. And then it would have the same pacing it has now but you would get all the benefits we talked about. Faster queue times, more strict matchmaking, yeah. better potential regains. Um, so you'd get all the benefits and you wouldn't get the drawback of a slower mid game because the playable area would be smaller. I think that's a great idea actually because another thing too is like, oh, well, I don't want to play on a smaller area or whatever. You never play on all of the map in a game anyway. The first no. circle is always cutting off like half the map, if you're lucky. If it's a normal circle, in fact, it's cutting off 75% of the playable area anyway in the first circle. So we kind of are already doing this with the dog shit trash Infinity Ward circles we have. So just make them a little smaller and then the pacing situation would be solved. I think that's yeah. the play, actually. I think you're right. Yeah, I, th I think that would be interesting to see. Um, I just... I kind of don't trust them to do it correctly. I feel like it would get the the Ted Timmons effect where they would end up like putting gulag entry kits and shit in there to make up for that and and try to not make the mid game feel boring because that's what they had said in this blog post too is that um they were concerns concerns of the mid game feeling claustrophobic and dragging out the climax of the match. So that's why they dialed up the second chance mechanics and dropped it to 100 players. So the players are way more likely to be able to come back. So it's the same people kind of fighting over and over again. So I don't know. I would just kind of be worried that ranks would turn into that, that they would do that. They would make that mistake instead. 
I think they are going to make that mistake at some point, no matter what. Unfortunately. I don't yeah. disagree with you, but they're going to make ranked a clown fiesta at some point. I don't know when. I don't know how, but they're going to do yeah. it. They've already kind of started. We're watching people in ranked at endgame as a team of three with seven reinforcement flares on them. Yep. It's kind of already started. Uh, and that's not going to yeah. like disappear. So, uh, I got to drink some water. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about the reinforcement flares after this, but... Um, <sighs> Yeah, it would be something I would want them to try, though. I think that could work well, like 120 player count, and basically just kind of change the circle pacing. Also, though, I <sighs> trying to think if it's possible for them to keep. So make the first circle smaller, but don't make the gas start closing in quickly like it does in pubs. So it's like people get the same amount of time to loot outside of the circle, but then they have to go further to get in because otherwise if they make it so gas starts coming in at like 90 seconds or whatever it is now whatever i said if they did um, that plus a smaller circle yeah that would be really bad yeah because then you can't you wouldn't even be able to land outside of the circle whereas Correct. like now the top of the circle could like just go up to like south of rohan oil and i feel totally comfortable landing at the tarak village stronghold and then getting into zone but if you have smaller circles and then also a faster or a, a slower, how do I describe it? Basically, the, the gas starts moving in faster. That would make it so people can't land outside of the circles at all, really. You just wouldn't have time to do anything. Yeah, I think if they so kept the pacing bad. the exact same and just made the first circle smaller, I think that yeah. would be fun. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, just the, just the circle size smaller. Yeah, and uh, so it would still be a little harder to rotate into first zone because you have the same amount of time to get to a smaller playable area. But it wouldn't be so much so much harder that it's like impossible to do. Uh, but, th but that's kind of... That's why it's hard to talk about this because if like you and I were in charge and we were going to do this... What I would say is, okay, let's start with by dropping it to 120. Let's make the first circle, whatever percentage the lobby player count has just been reduced by, make the first circle exactly that percentage smaller. And then the rest of the game plays the same, the pacing plays the same, the timers all are the same. Keep everything else the same. But also, we're gonna also add double the amount of balloons so that if people are landing outside the first circle, it's now they have more opportunities to get into that circle because it is going to be harder than it used to be before we shrunk the first circle. That's another thing. And it's like, would they do that? Maybe, maybe not. Or yeah. another thing that like they could conceivably do, add more vehicles, add more helicopters, again, add more balloons, um, make the more balloons portable would be balloons nice in general. better make the portable yeah. balloons viable at buy stations. Like there's a ton of things they could do to augment that change, but would they do any of those things? I don't know. I, I kind of doubt it, frankly. They'd also, I think if they're doing this, would have to change buy stations there. Cause there all, are already, I think too few buy stations. Um, some of the areas are just spread out way too thin. You got to go really far between buy stations. So in ranks, when there's a team at a buy station, which there always is, it's so hard to get to one that's safe. So I feel like also if the first circle is going to be smaller, then they would have to totally change up the buy station placement again. Buy station placement and then also add maybe five to seven more of them total on the map so that they're more likely to be more buy stations in the circle that's now smaller. You know what I would really like to see? This is kind of a random thought, but when I think about ranked, these kind of ideas crop up. What if they added like 10 more buy stations to Moz? Okay, but whenever you purchase literally anything, there's some signal to other people that someone just used that buy. Because the worry about having too many buy stations from IDub's perspective is 
it makes them too accessible, too easy to buy flares or whatever you need, and there's no risk anymore if there are too many buys. Right now, we're having the opposite problem, where every single buy is basically inaccessible unless you were the first one there. And if you are the first one there and you have a brain, you hold that position. It's like, okay, we're gonna use this buy and then we're gonna hold this buy and we're gonna be in a rooftop of kinda close and if anyone tries to buy on it, they're dead. Like we're keeping it literally in our line of sight. And this way we have access to it to buy things as we need them as the game goes on, blah, blah, mm. blah. Um, so what if it was like doing uh, a recon contract in Warzone 1, for example, where if you hit a buy and you buy anything, or if you have the buy station menu open, like a green fucking light beam goes up in the air and then it goes away as soon as you close the menu. That would be interesting. Or um, maybe there's like a mini map icon in the same way that you get the little red comms tower denoting that someone just used it. What if buy stations turned red if someone hit them? Um, yeah. And on top of that, you add more of them. I think that could be pretty interesting. And it would keep... It would make buys more accessible in some sense, but it wouldn't be the case that you can hit a buy and if no one is there, you just get away with it for free. There's still some risk whether someone's there or not. I don't think yeah. it's ever going to happen, so I don't know. It's mm. not... Not really yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think but... of like, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think of like what the downsides of that would be. I'm not really sure. I think the biggest uh, downside would be they're incapable of doing anything correctly with the UI, so it would never work. I yeah, mean, every considering we still have fake the whole game. Yeah, yeah, and and considering we still have fake loadout drops, um, fake, fake loadout drop icons or no loadout drop icons on my screen, I don't think they could ever do that correctly. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's of course true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my Walmart order got here three hours early, so I need to go grab this off the porch. Okay. If you want to keep, uh, if you want to start talking about reinforcement flares, maybe I'll just be a few minutes. All right. Um. Yeah. What was I gonna say? Uh. But yeah, because I I also want to see more buy stations on Moz and in ranked, but I think it would be, you don't want to make them too accessible in ranked, because like again, right now in ranked outside of the very early game like mid game and beyond every buy station is hot it's like effectively camped and that means there basically aren't buy stations uh, except for very early in ranked usually unless you're the team holding the particular buy station and i think that kind of sucks um i want them to be more accessible than they are now but I don't want them to be too accessible because then everyone's going to be buying flares and kill streaks and their guns and there isn't enough of a punish for being killed or having your team wiped or whatever. That would be a problem. So I'm trying to think of a way where you can have more buy stations, but there also still be some risk associated with using them. Because right now the risk is that they're all camped. Uh, but if you added 10 and, and didn't change anything else, they would probably just be too easy to hit. And then you would just deal. And everyone has so much money, especially mid to late game now, that if buy stations were too accessible, it would be a clown fiesta. Everyone would have flares, eight boxes, and eight kill streaks also. Um, and that's not at all what I want to see. We've seen that in caldera and that was fucking miserable toward the end of caldera i don't know if you guys remember but every single late game was just constant kill streak spam because there was a ton of money and there were a ton of buys so everyone had cash and you could come back really easily so like everyone had infinite money and it was just like okay well i i'm gonna have to sit in this building for four precisions on average, like every game, it was a disaster. I don't want to see that happen. So yeah, I was trying to think of a way where you could add some more buys 
but still have some risk associated with it. And maybe like some yeah. kind of signal that you've used it would be a good idea. But yeah, again, this is kind of a moot point. I don't think this is on the devs' radar. But moving on to the flares, yeah. Uh, soon after Tanner and I talked about this, the fact of them adding reinforcement flares to ranked, we kind of tentatively said it was a cool idea that we liked, but there might be too many of them. And we weren't sure yet. And I think that day or the next day, I was watching Symphony play ranked. And his team, I think, had like five actually reinforcement flares going into endgame. And I was like, okay, well, that's probably that's probably too much. It's probably too many. And then Tanner also saw a fun and exciting little TikTok illustrating the the extremes of when reinforcement flaring goes too far that he can tell us about. And that makes you wonder, uh, do we want these in ranked still? And if so, what needs to change? Because I think there are just too many, yeah. Yeah, you watch... Um, yeah, so the video I saw, uh, it was on Vondel. Uh, Duo went around and I guess found and bought a backpack full of reinforcement flares. They ran way out of the gas, way out of the gas. Uh, in the final circles, one of them would die. Right before he was going to die, so he's like 30% health, 20% health, he would pop the flare, he would get downed, he would immediately give up. By that point, his teammate was already floating in the air. They would land back on the place where they had dropped 12 of these on the ground. Jesus Christ. Pick it up, wait till he was one shot, pop it. Same thing over and over. Just they did this for yeah. minutes. Minutes until they eventually just won the game. Yeah, so... Um, you know, it's... <sighs> what can they do? Well, one, I guess loot should start to despawn in the gas after a certain amount of time. I mean, my loot in rank despawns 30 seconds Dude, after I die. Why do reinforcement true. flares stay... 300 meters outside of the safe zone for minutes, you know? Yeah, that's a funny Also, yeah, point. we don't know what that is in rank. Does anyone know if that's intended or if that's a bug? Because I'm not kidding. You can get down to full die, go to the gulag, immediately get into gulag match, win, come back, and your loot despawns. This literally it's gone happened already. to me. Not the this last time I played happens. ranked, but the time before. I uh, We got loadout. We went into stronghold. We got loadout. I died, I went to Gulag, I got in right away, because it was early game, obviously, I won, and it wasn't like the lo like a triple overtime Gulag match or some shit, it was a normal Gulag, I don't remember it. I come back, I land where I died, and there's nothing there. All my guns had despawned. So this must have been, I'm not kidding, absolutely sub two minutes, probably mm -hmm. 90 seconds total between me dying and then me being back at the location. And the loot was gone by then. So it was less than 90 seconds, maybe a minute? And I don't know if this is intended or not. It's, once again, it's the fun and exciting game that Infinity Ward loves to play with its consumers, which is bug or feature. We yeah. don't know. They've never said anything about it. So I don't know if this is intended or not, but it only happens in Ranked. In Vondel, yeah, only in ranked. In Vondel, my loot is always there forever. In it fact, doesn't despawn. I kind of want it to despawn in Vondel because sometimes there are eight people's loadouts in the same pixel, and I just can't pick up what the shit I want. There's way too much loot on the ground. Despawn some of that, yeah, not my single loadout that ton. I just lost in ranked. It's and again, bugger feature we don't know. Um, that annoys the fuck out of me. I'm glad you brought that up because I totally forgot about that. If it's a feature, change it. If it's a bug, fix it. Uh, either way. But anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, that could be one solution to the flare problem. I don't... I, yeah, I don't think those flares would stay on the ground long enough in ranked. So, it be, and again, bug or feature, we don't know, but... Uh, obviously the, the video Tanner described of that duo would be less feasible and ranked. You wouldn't be able to really get 12, bo 12 flares cause you'd have to, I mean, maybe you would, if you're looting every single medicine cabinet, you could get quite a few of them. And buy station and then just staying alive. So not fighting anyone running away from yeah. fights, hiding. Yeah. 
Yeah, so you don't have to actually it's use possible. any. It's possible. So someone you will do this, lot. and there will be a viral clip and ranked here soon of that happening. Yeah. Um, I think the solution is... I, I don't even... That's a funny story, but I don't even think that is, like, the problem itself. I think the problem is, even if people aren't doing that, it's still just a problem that a team can have five reinforcement flares, period. That's too many. You shouldn't be able to have that many. So that means that they are too accessible. Whether or not people are essentially exploiting the game by standing in the gas and alternating firing it, that's kind of beside the point. Um, the main point, I think, is that just there are too many reinforcement flares in general. They're too accessible. How do we... First of all, do you guys agree? Do, do you agree, Tanner? And then if we all do agree on this, uh, what's the solution? I would say yeah. they need to not at all be ground loot, and but you can keep them in buys as they are. Because as we've just finished talking about, you're not going to be able to hit every buy station on the map or in the zone. You'll be able to hit two or three buys a game. So that would be three flares if they were only accessible at buys. And that's if you buy them and they haven't been sold out by the time you get to all your buys. I think that's totally fine. Um, so it's actually a pretty simple solution as far as I'm concerned. Take them co literally 0% spawn chance. The only way to get a flare is to kill someone who has one on them or to buy one yourself at a buy station. I think that solves the problem, frankly. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about it now too. I, what if... I'm trying to think how it would play if they weren't available. So the opposite of what you said, they weren't available in buy stations, but they're only lootable. Because I don't know how like it usually works for the super sweats. If they're buying them or whatnot, I'm usually just noticing in game, both. all of them have two of them on them. Mm -hmm. So they all, it's one guy pushes, gets a down, gets a full, he dies, he makes a dumb push because he knows he'll get purchased back and it affords him the ability to just make stupid plays, which kind of defeats the purpose of ranked too. You shouldn't be able to just go and do something dumb and know that it doesn't matter because your teammates will just flare you back. Um, so I'm wondering too, because also like the times I want my teammate to find one is when we die off rip, two people lose their gulag, one guy is running around with no money because we died immediately. And then he's just looting medicine cabinets for a flare. Because that's like the one time that like I feel like is balanced too. And fair is like early game when you don't have money, it gets your teammate back, it starts getting you guys in that um that regain. So I wonder I wonder what would be better. Yeah, only in buy stations and no ground loot, or only ground loot and no buy stations. I don't know. Either way, one of those two would be a lot better. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think either there's would also be better. I've had other thoughts too, like what if they make it so it, you can't use it in gas? That's another idea. Like you can't hit loadout drops in gas, but your teammate could be one. You could be one shot and ranked getting shot at run in gas behind a building. And as you're running away, getting shot about to die, you pop your flare. You know, they could do something like that too. So it's only usable in the safe zone. I wouldn't be opposed to that. That would make that, it a lot more balanced, but I still think there would be too many. Um, cause most yeah. people aren't like exploiting gas to use them in ranked, at least that I've seen. Um, here's an idea. This is something we originally had in Warzone 1. Do you remember what the reward was once upon a time for the scavenger contract in Warzone 1? There was some money, sure, but it also explicitly guaranteed you a satchel. So you could hold mm. eight plates instead of whatever, five. Um, what if the reinforcement flare was a guaranteed reward for some type of contract? Mm. Instead of it being lootable, like randomly in medicine cabinets or something. So like, what if it was like you could buy them or if you do a fucking Intel contract or pick your contract you are guaranteed to get a reinforcement flare as part of the reward, in addition to the money and whatever other dumb shit you get. Yeah. It's an interesting idea, It too. would make people do contracts, yeah. It'd have to and, be like Save Crack or Intel. It couldn't really be Bounty, because it has to be somewhere where it could spawn. 
Yeah, because it would offer um, it would offer a path for the situation you're talking about, where it's like you all get wiped off rip, two people lose their gulag because they're trash, one guy's left, he has no money, and the fact of reinforcement flares not being lootable sucks a lot in that position, and yeah. that's where you want flares to be accessible in that scenario specifically. That's where you want the most, actually. You don't really want them in endgame uh, as much. So yeah. I agree with that. I think you're right. So if there was some type of contract that gave a flare as a reward, that person could always do that. Yeah. I feel like safe cracker would be a good one. Like when you complete the last safe cracker, there's like a flare. The safe the crackers safe, yeah. need balance so bad. Like none, none of the con. So most wanted and bounty are the only two usable contracts in Warzone ranked. I don't know why the others are even in there. They serve no purpose other than cluttering the UI. Uh, I accidentally picked up a safe cracker and I was like, oh, maybe we should just do it. Pull up my map. The furthest one was 400 meters away. <laughs> like That's what? Far. Like it's why? Why would That's we do that? It's it's outrageous. All three of them should be within 150 meters of you. They're just not usable at all. No one is ever doing them because they're so bad. I I don't know why you would ever grab them. It takes so much time to find loot where you could just find money in that same loot in the same amount of time. More money probably by just looting around. I don't I don't understand it. So yeah, that could be interesting as some sort of contract reward. Give people a reason to actually do the contracts. Because as far as I'm concerned, yeah, let let me just hide all contracts other than bounties really and then at certain times i want to do a most wanted if you land somewhere uncontested you may as well grab a most wanted because no one landed with you why not grab it and My get fortress. free cash out of it yeah which we did yeah um we do that a lot yeah we grab most wanted's early uh by the way in case you guys didn't know medicine cabinets duffel bags that counts towards the most wanted timer so open everything it's not just chess um but uh yeah yeah, that could be interesting as a contract reward because you'd see far less of it too. Because like the people really taking advantage of this again are the really really good players. None of them are ever taking the time to do a contract. Exactly. Even after this change, they're like, "Oh fuck that! I'm not going to spend three minutes doing a safe cracker when I could kill ten people in those three yeah. minutes." Like it doesn't it make any sense. Yeah. 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 So yeah, there are a lot of I think better ways they could do it. Bottom line, it needs to not be as common in ground loot and then also at every buy station one at every buy something needs to change Something's with that there are far give. too many of them late game mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think so especially because uh and this is something they have started to rectify to their credit but like if i get flared back late game and ranked or bought back th and this has happened before by the way first thing i'm doing is fucking space bar and i'm chilling i'm just gonna float in the air and just get more and more placement SR while people yep. have to fight below me. And it's like, okay, do I deserve to get like second place instead of fifth because I was dog shit and happened to get flared back? Like, obviously not. So they've already started to fix this though. Uh, you, your altitude is lower in proportion to how late in the game you are in ranked, which I think was a very good idea. But, yeah. um, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, there are things they could do. Yeah, I, I think the, 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 the main point is they're just too accessible. There are too many of them. Um, yeah, I agree. But anyway, it, it should be used as a regain tool, not so you just make dumb plays late game and nothing matters because yeah. you have six of them. Yeah, exactly. That's the issue with That's them. That's a good way to put it. it. It should be like a regain tool. But again, none of these things come up in testing because the people that play test the game are like an average of 0.5 KD. So they don't ever think of issues like this that could arise because they're dumb and not good at the game. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's why they need to bring people into play tests who actually know things about the game. But yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, moving on is should you land on a stronghold immediately in ranked? Have we evolved <laughs> yeah. in this? Yeah, we kind of kind of talked about this, I guess, with the serif based stuff. But um, yeah, the the okay, they're called abandoned supply caches. That's what it is. That's where that's the strongholds that aren't strongholds that are the money sign. Yeah. Um, I guess the bigger question I have is how to take strongholds, which I think totally still varies game to game. I haven't, I don't really have an answer for that. But basically. We mark a stronghold, we start floating in. The question always is, you start seeing three teams, you see four teams. 
do you just land and start getting on the stronghold or do you third party it? And I, it's, I wish there was just like an easy answer, but I still don't have one. Cause there are many times where we'll loot around a little bit, wait for everyone in there to fight. So everyone has like no plates. One team finally caps the stronghold. So they get their guns, but they don't have loot. They don't have plates cause they waste all our time fighting. And then you can actually with like, uh, with the X-12 pistol, you can actually just camp the exits and outgun these people because you're going to be fully plated from looting for one minute and they're going to have nothing aside from their loadout guns with one magazine each. So a lot of times, actually, we just let people take the stronghold and then immediately kill them when they come out. And it's like, it's not even a fair fight sometimes and all we have is ground loot or some other shitty gun. Um, so I, I can never decide what to do. And then, you know, a lot of times you want to just land right on it and, but then you risk just dying and getting nothing out of it. Um, but yeah, it just it varies so much from game to game. But lately, I've been thinking that if it's very contested, you're better off not landing on it and actually just wait for someone to cap it and then essentially hold the building. And that happens all the time. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that. You'll get a stronghold. You'll fight a team there. Get your loadout. You'll start walking out the front door and just like there's an actual ambush shut up for you. Yeah. Because there are always like there are one or I guess there are probably always two ways out of a stronghold just about. At a minimum there's like, two. Yeah. There's like a bottom door Um, because you can't just jump out the window. So it's not like you can go a bunch of different ways. It's like you can either go to the roof and jump off. Some of them you can't even get to the roof. You can go through like the bottom floor door. Sometimes there are two doors or you can go through like you can jump off a balcony sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty easy to hold them. Um, and I feel like that's like when we've been going Seraph Bay, there's one of the particular strongholds, the one closest to the water tower where everyone snipes on ground war, that stronghold right there. Whenever we see teams going there, we land on a roof next to it and you just start shooting at people and like get them, get your assist basically. And then they'll all fight in there. They'll all die. And then we end up pushing them usually right after they cap it and you just clean them up and it's usually not hard to do. And, and a lot of times I think that is actually easier than wasting your time fighting over the stronghold just to get your loadout guns first when it really doesn't end up mattering. Yeah. The only thing that matters is who, who actually clears the whole POI and comes out alive. Getting, getting your guns first almost doesn't matter. Yeah. Exactly. So I don't know, that's just kind of something to think about. It's um, funny you said that. Cause that's kind of what I was going to say is there are like three strategies. Really? You could try to land at a stronghold and cap it first. It's like strat. That's like obvious strategy. Number one, you could land real close to a stronghold and then do kind of what Tanner's talking about, or you can just not land at a stronghold at all. Um, and I think all of these can be viable and it does depend. Uh, but if you're going to not land even close to a stronghold, you can't just land anywhere. This is not Verdansk anymore. And uh, we made this mistake yesterday. Jake was like, let's try not landing at a stronghold. Let's just go. I don't know. He picked the worst spot on earth somewhere. So we just landed some random spot where there is not loot. And that was a bad play. So if you want to land away from strongholds, period, you can do that if you want to just like loot for cash, but you need to make sure you're landing at a POI that has cash because not all of them do. So that's one big asterisk if you're going to go with that strategy. Strategy one and two are land at a stronghold, basically. And I think I agree with basically everything Tanner said. If we're going to be very much first to a stronghold but another team's coming but they're like 20 seconds away at that point you should just take the stronghold yourself 100% because then you're going to have time they're not going to have time to like outloot you while you're capping they're still in the air because you're beating them by so much and you'll and that'll afford you some time to start looting up some plates and ammo as they are like just landing or whatever that's pretty obvious if you're like very much first if you're not, if you're landing like right with another team or even later than another team, Tanner's absolutely right. The best play to do, land off that stronghold, get some ground loot, get a decent little fucking RPK ground loot, get some plates, get some ammo, 
and then you know they're at the stronghold so you can just hold them or wait or push them yourselves or yeah. you know worst case scenario is they fucking leave before you're able to push them or start camping them cool well now there's no one in the stronghold so go cap it yourself and you got loadout it's that simple so like that works very often um that's absolutely true because one thing about the strongholds is there's no loot there's like two plates that's it so if you go to a stronghold building and you don't get your loadout or even if you do you're not getting anything else there's like a couple plates that's kind of it there's rarely even like ground loot guns it's kind of crazy but i think that's a good idea actually because then it's like okay well you have your loadout that's good enough you know so yeah I, th I think you're right but don't get too lost in the sauce and thinking if i don't get the stronghold i'm just fucked it's not true at all yeah it's not true at all just make yeah. sure you find yourself some plates and some uh some ground loot guns and then again you can either camp it uh you can just let them leave and then go take it yourself or uh you could push them and kill them you know yeah because there have been plenty of times where we uh this happened to us this happened to us multiple times at Tarak, actually that stronghold where we are the first ones to take it that two that and multi -level then we just one? get fucking destroyed yeah because there's like two or three <laughs> other teams outside harassing you under above and it's like a real mess and it's like cool i don't feel good about having a stronghold right now i'm trapped in this building that one is rough yeah, yeah. if you're that contested really there that one's rough because you basically have to jump off and pull your chute so then you're such an easy target yeah you can't just run downstairs yeah, you can't no get to the roof because the roof is capped yeah yeah that that is a rough one mm -hmm. um another thing too is if there are multiple teams landing it is total and complete bait trying to be the first one to hit the ground you are better off being the second or third team to hit the ground um because i i've been doing that lately too i'll pull my shoot later and kind of watch where everyone's landing and then you mark a guy and you're like let's land on this guy like say this guy landed on the roof to the left of the stronghold that seraph bay that we're trying to hit he's not going to be really expecting anyone he's immediately hitting the ground he's looking around for a gun or something on the roof so what you do is mark him your team is landing in five seconds after him both of you land on the roof by the time he realizes you're hitting the ground you have such an advantage and then you're just immediately downing and fooling that guy so that's the thing too is don't try to be the first person there because that's often going to get you killed and that's that's kind of how it works with the stronghold the first team into the stronghold seems to be the one that usually dies first so kind of let other people land fight pick a guy mark him say oh let's land on this guy real quick and then it's a lot easier that way usually come out um usually come out better there yeah 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 for so sure i like doing that yeah i agree um but yeah it is kind of it's somewhat situational whether or not you should land by a stronghold or not though i think again you can land off a stronghold completely let's say there's no stronghold at sarah bay for example you could land there anyway and because there's so much money and loot you could just buy a loadout pretty quickly you can do that but in general i wouldn't recommend it i think you'd most of the time just rather land by a stronghold because either you get loadout first or you kill the team that got loadout first and then you get it second and now you have some kills you have some sr or they leave early and then you just go cap it yourself and then you still get loadout quite early i think the upsides to landing by a stronghold are too attractive to like not to just like forsake it completely you can get away with it it's not like gonna ruin your game necessarily the yeah. only way you're fucked is if you land off a stronghold and at a POI that doesn't have loot. You need to not do that. That's the only way that you're like failing. Anything else is like workable, but that's a failure. Don't do that. We did it yesterday because Jake picked the worst possible location. I don't remember what <laughs> yeah. it was, but there was no loot and no stronghold. So we, we just had no money, no bitches and then we you know we won that game actually we ended up winning but it was like lucky that we did and we were just we were just playing grab ass until the community loadout dropped so don't do that yeah don't be us yeah. anyway uh gun situation people still seem to be using the squall 
in the ISO 45 and ranked. Yeah, uh, I'll talk about mine real quick because mine haven't changed at all, really. I use the Cronin still. I've tried the TAC V, talked about it a lot. I prefer the TAC V on Resurgence, not for ranked. Uh, I know me personally, I won't hit nearly as many shots at 75 meters or something with a TAC V, so it's complete cap to use it. Uh, unless you're hitting a bunch of shots at that range, you're actually better off with a slightly slower time to kill on paper Cronin because the time to kill is going to be faster if you can hit shots with it. So I've been running that. Uh, I've swapped from high velocity to the barrel on ranked so that I have the lowest amount of recoil control. Um, works well. And then you get the extra damage range too, which for the Cronin's a lot. It's like an extra nine meters or something. So those like close to mid range gunfights, uh, you'll win head to head someone with a different gun that doesn't have that long of a first damage range. So that's, I've been liking that too. Uh, but yeah, I used that, tried the TAC V, didn't like it, tried the iron sight, tried the red dot, just don't like it that much. Uh, great for resurgence, yeah, but I'm not I'm not trying to shoot people at 100 meters with an iron sight gun where when it bounces once, you lose track of the person completely because of the visual recoil in the game. Unusable for me. So I'm still using the Cronin, and I like it. Really haven't tried anything else, uh, so there's not much to discuss. And then uh, I've tried been trying the ISO with this update. Uh, I, I don't know. It's the same thing. It's too, it's too bouncy. Irons suck. You could use a red dot, but then you're like sacrificing another attachment that could be for recoil control. So it's like, okay, cool. I can see these people easily at 20 meters where the ISO has like the best time to kill of all SMGs by far, or all the meta SMGs. But it doesn't matter because I can't hit them because of the bounce. So I'm never getting the kill anyways. So right. I just don't like it. I'm still on the Lockman sub, uh, which is the best up close in a building. In a room, you're like always going to win that fight if you hit all shots versus someone else using a gun with all shots. Uh, tried the Vel, same thing, didn't like it. Time to kill up close sucks. It's like 700 milliseconds. Lockman 600 at that range. So, like, you have the extra damage range, but I don't know. I don't like it. You're, you end up losing so many close range gunfights. So, that sucks. Um, so, yeah, I, I haven't changed anything. I'm using the Cronin Squall still in the Lockman sub, and that's what I like. Yeah. Um,. Yeah, there is yeah, there isn't actually too too much I want to say. One thing is uh we had a spirited discussion on how all guns are the same and that there is no Amax versus Kilo anymore. There's no gun with like a lot of recoil but a way faster TTK. And someone pointed out to us, I don't know if this was on YouTube or Discord. I think it was on a YouTube comment. So shout out to whoever you were, get fucked. Uh they were like Raz, that gun exists. It's the Castov 762, which is an AK. And I saw that and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Okay. But I remembered that gun having so much recoil that it was like worse than an Amax. Um, but I said, you know what? Fuck it. Let me try it again. I haven't tried the AK in quite a long time. And I think my memory of how much recoil the AK had was informed by trying to use the zoom optic, the Schlager on it. And with a Schlager, yeah, totally unusable. So it ha it does have more recoil than an Amax, but every gun has more recoil than an Amax. If you want to put a 3X scope on any, any full auto gun in this game, they're all unusable. So I think it's kind of fine. Um, it's a topic for another time. Uh, but with a red dot, it's actually not bad. Uh, the AK at all. It has a really good time to kill, by the way. It does kill faster than every other AR at every damage range. Uh, I didn't look at its headshot multipliers, but I would imagine they are similar to most of the other guns in the game. But it has a faster TTK than the Cronin and the TAC V by a decent amount. And it's also got some pretty solid damage ranges. And. I think it's easier to control than Attack V also, actually. I think it's harder to control than the Squall, though, but not by much. And it might be about yeah, the same as the Squall. Yeah, it's harder to control than the Squall, I think. Actually, yeah. But it's really not that bad. It's certainly not as bad as I remembered it. So shout out to that person that said you should try that. That's like kind of the gun you're looking for. And I did, in fact, use it in a game of Ranked, the game we ended up winning, I was running that with uh, Lockman Sub, and I had 
double the number of kills Jake had, and we won the game. And I had more Got than it. double the number of kills Cope had. Yeah, I had 10, Jake had 5, and Cope had 4. And I wow. was using that AK thing. Um, Chip cans, huh? They're terrible. Yeah, they're both younger yeah, they're than me, too. It's really shameful. But anyway, we yeah. won the game, and uh, I was using the cast off. I think I used it one other game, and it felt good, too. Um, it's very solid. And you notice having a faster TTK than everyone else, There, I, half of those 10 kills was like at 20 meters. And that's where you love having an AK. Because at 20 meters with a red dot, it doesn't have any recoil. It's the... It's as easy to land every bullet as an ISO hemlock at that at that close of a well. distance. But it also has a way faster TTK than whatever the other people are using. So it's really, really, really solid for those like close mid I'm Infinity Ward, close mid damage range yeah. engagements. Um so I would encourage you all to give the cast of 762 a try. You might be wondering, why aren't any of these top 250 players using it? There is a good reason, and I think it's twofold. Number one, this might be one of those scenarios where it's like a, a keyboard and mouse gun. For example, the Ram 7 in Warzone 1, great gun, really solid, but very hard to control with a controller very easy to control with a mouse. That was like the keyboard and mouse weapon in Warzone 1, the Ram 7. It was just really awkward to use on controller for whatever reason. The AK might be one of those things as well because it doesn't feel that bad at all, on, but I'm on keyboard and mouse. It could be how it recoils is really dog shit for um, controller. Another thing which is more obvious is the biggest mag you can get is 40 rounds. That's the biggest downside. Um, it's not the recoil. That fucking sucks. It's not the handling. It's the 40 round mag. Yeah. That's enough to get a kill or two, especially with its time to kill. But where the 40 round mag feels really bad is at long range, which a lot of your gunfights are, where you're going to be missing bullets no matter what gun you're using. So uh, having only 40 is a real fucking big deal. And I think that's why a lot of people don't want to run it. Yeah, God, your roommates are barking off back there, huh? Yeah, I don't know what the fuck he's doing, but anyway. Um, Yeah, I, I was just looking at that uh, damage per mag. Like at, at the longest damage range, which you're in that, I would say most of the time on ranked play, like past like 40, 50 meters, uh, cast off 762 is doing 280 less damage per mag than even like the Cronin is. And even the Cronin doesn't have great damage per mag anymore. So that's pretty shit. It's, it's like a thousand damage per mag at that range. So. That's the thing for me is even though it reloads fast, it's like once you run out of ammo, that's still enough time for someone to then just get away. And you always run out of ammo with the at the worst time with that gun. I don't know. Uh, now for like resurgence, I think it's good for that. Resurgence is actually cool now because you can use so many guns in resurgence. I died to some kid this week that was using an STB and I was like, oh, I'm going to try this since a bunch of guns have gotten nerfed. That gun is really fucking fun. Not the most competitive, not the best time to kill, but it is so much fun to use because it has really good mobility, uh, really easy to headshots with. I was like, holy shit, this is a great gun to use. And it, you know, that also has a, has a small mag reloads quickly, but on resurgence, it's like, you know, whatever, even if I run out of ammo, I'm in a damage range where I can use my SMG, so I can just pull out my SMG and finish some guy off. Uh, you know, make sure he finishes. I like doing that to all the guys. And so, I think that's a fun gun, too. So, I think Castov is good for Resurgence, but yeah, I don't I don't know about ranked play. And I noticed it on Resurgence, too, is it has too much recoil for having miserable ADS speed and mobility and all that. Like, it, it feels like the mobility is almost worse than a Cronin. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know. For for like, it has really it slow ADS. Really slow AD. What did you use a barrel or no? No. High velocity okay. round. Yeah, that's probably why. High velocity muzzle extendos optic under barrel. Okay. Yeah. 
So yeah, yeah it could um, be the barrel you were using. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know though. It uh I don't know. I didn't love the feeling of the gun, but I feel like cuz you've never seen anyone use it. If if you're going to like use an AK variant, I just like use the RPK even, which has double the mag size and probably I actually haven't checked the RPK this season. It's probably RPK, almost the same time to kill. I think it's decently slower. I'll check right now though. Is it? Yeah. I'm looking. Um yeah, it's, have it pulled up. it's slower at close range, but uh long range it's faster and you get way more ammo with it a little bit faster they're about the same everywhere they're pretty similar um yeah yeah so another interesting thing i'm noticing here with the cast of miserable limb damage like if you do chest shots on sim it's faster than a cronin like say that first damage range it's 100 milliseconds faster you change that to like the arm and then it's 100 milliseconds slower and I feel like you are missing because like the the weird bounce with the cast off. I feel like you're going to end up like getting arm shots and shit like that. Uh, and that then it's kind weird, of trash yeah. for that. It, it gets a lot worse when you hit anything else but the chest. Well, it's headshot and multiplier then head. is way higher too. Yeah. Yeah, but e even with headshots, Cronin still becomes really close. It's it's a closer time to kill at that point. Closest range, thirty milliseconds different versus a hundred. Yeah, if they're both hitting only headshots. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That's weird. How and then the tummy, tummy too is a big one. Tummy's the same. Yeah. Uh, and mm -hmm. then Cronin's better everywhere else, pretty much. Yeah, that limb damage makes it a lot less attractive too. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why that's so low. Yeah, that's weird. Um, so I don't know. Uh, it honestly, would I recommend fire it rate. for ranked? No, but I would recommend it for resurgence. Um, mm -hmm. for sure. Or I would at least recommend you try it and see how it feels. But yeah, with that limb multiplier, you're going to be hitting a lot of limb shots. So yeah, you probably don't want to use this in ranked. But when I was, I and again, those few games, I happened to be quite close to a lot of the people I was in gunfights with. And that's where you love the AK. Like, I, I remember there were, we were at like some random shack and there was a balloon there. And we were holding this and a lot of people were pushing us. So I would just be in like a field and there would be teams pushing like along a fence. So it would be actually just heads up at like 18 meters. And there I'm not hitting limbs like, you know, it's all like chest and up. And that's yeah. why I was just fucking melting people. But that is not going to be super common in ranked. Yeah. What's going to be way more common is you're shooting people very far away and missing bullets no matter what gun you're using. And if you're hitting shots, it's probably on a limb. In, in, in which case, there's just no reason to be using that gun because it has a not a good limb multiplier and it only has a 40 round mag. Yeah. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend it for ranked. It makes sense people with, are not uh, using it. With rank two, one thing we discussed on a recent episode is that limb damage actually comes into play a lot. Because think how often like you're holding someone on the edge of gas and they're having to rotate in in the middle of the open. They're throwing smokes. They're running through a zero cover. A lot of those shots you're hitting because they're never running directly at you. They're exactly. trying to get away from you. You are going to hit a lot of arm shots and things like that. So, you know, usually you wouldn't really think of something like that, especially for like resurgence. R resurgence gunfights, you're hitting like only chest shots, only chest stomach. It's because it, they're usually you're usually looking directly at someone and they're so close to you. They're usually uh, shooting you back in other words. But yeah, if yeah. you're, yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> if you're, if you're mounted up trying to shoot someone crossing the open at a hundred meters, you're actually not hitting a chest shot like it's not possible you're getting a bunch of limb shots leg yeah. shots so i think you do need to pay attention to that a little bit more if you play ranked play especially or just maws in general big map but um yeah so i still like cronin and lock and i haven't changed my setup at all i've tried other few other things like i said didn't like yeah them. and yeah. unless you're highly skilled don't take the bait you will not do well with attack v iron sight uh uh red dot none of them you won't do that well with and you're not allowed to use attack V on a keyboard and mouse also. It, like the Iron Sight build, it's not possible to use that on keyboard I and mouse. I hate it, yeah. It's I just, do not like it at all. It's an insane thing to you do. You don't see people. You just you look at hit markers and hope you're hitting them. It's not fun to use yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, you're never getting a theoretical TTK with that. So anyway, 
moving on to sniping. Um, yeah, I've been, I'm a signal main now in ranked. It's so much more goddamn fun. And it offers so much utility. Um, one, the only thing with respect to sniping we have not tried is having every one of us sniping. But I don't think you would want that. And in fact, when I watch like Symphony play ranked, he usually uses the signal. And he's also usually the only one on his team using it. Um, it's not like his whole team using it, at least that I've noticed. And I think that is kind of the way to go. Uh, having one person sniping with the signal specifically, you can either soften people up a lot so that your ARs can finish or vice versa. Your AR softens some guy up a lot and then all you need to do as a sniper is land one headshot, or even maybe neck, and you get it down. And it's like free as fuck. Uh, it's tremendously valuable and helpful, I think, to have someone uh, using the sniper. And again, it's also a lot more fun. And you'll be surprised how often you can, in fact, down people by yourself. Because there are a lot of people, a lot of times, on a head glitch trying to hold yeah. a roof or a balcony um, and waiting for people to rotate in the zone or whatever. And if you do have a sniper, you can shoot them in the head and now they either have to stop peeking you so you can now run into zone when otherwise you wouldn't be able to. Or they can not uh, take cover and then they can just die, I guess where you just shoot them one more time and they're down. Um, and that happens more often than you th think it would. Uh, like, oh, I'm never gonna land two headshots in a row. If you're using a low zoom optic on the signal so your recoil isn't like super crazy, you'd be surprised how often people will just let you dink them up twice in a row. I I was very surprised by this, but it's not like every game and it's not like every time someone's on a head glitch, you're guaranteed a down far from it but there are more times than you would think where people will just let you shoot them in the head twice if they're on a roof it's kind of shocking but it's true um and that's obviously valuable as well because no full auto gun am i ripping someone off a head glitch on a roof that that gun doesn't exist and like getting a down it never happens yeah but when you have the signal you have that opportunity and then you can rotate in off of that you can push off of that or you can streak it and get a full off of that. So, and those are all opportunities you only get by having someone sniping on your team. It's really nice. And there's the added benefit, of course, of I have fun, where otherwise I don't have fun. Uh, mm. There's no fun to be had missing bullets with a red dot shooting at someone 200 Did meters away. Did you try away. hitting them? I've tried hitting them, try but it's not possible. So, try getting younger. Um, try plugging in a PED. I should try plug. I should try, try all those things. PEDs. Get younger. Plug in a PED. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I need. I need a lot of accessories to yourself. do all that. But um, yeah. Uh, what was I gonna say? But yeah, sniping's. Uh, it's valuable. It's worth doing. I think, and it's fun. Yeah, I haven't been sniping. Um, but it is very valuable, I think, to have one guy on your team that that is sniping. I, it's I think really really important actually to have one person sniping. If like you're not there, usually none of us are sniping, and there are a lot of situations where I wish we did have a sniper. But I don't know. W when we play more aggressive, it's fun using full auto guns um so i don't want to have to snipe but yeah having one person on your squad with especially when you get to that point like uh, maybe like fifth circle or so when there are a good amount of players left the circle small and everyone is in a building yes uh you're all shooting at the same team the yep. same people popping popping out of windows it's very important right then to have it as well yeah but yeah, yeah i'm just i'm just not usually going to run one anymore but i like having someone sniping on my team yeah. Yeah. So something to keep in mind there. Yeah. And then uh, I think last thing here to talk about for me, kind of talk about the perk setup, what we've been doing. So uh, as you know, in season five, Birdseye got a buff. Let me uh, 
birds. Was it season five or before that? Why I think is this it was not working? Four point five. Yeah, I guess it was. Um, so bird's eye now. It shows ghosted players when you pop one. So this when is what a wave, yeah. This is what all of the top players are running in ranked, and usually all three of them are running it. So my advice is at least have one person on your team running bird's eye. Like you guys weren't running it yesterday, and I was like, what? What are you guys doing? How are none of you running bird's eye? That's so fucking crazy. Having one person run it is absolutely massive. And then that one person just has to make sure when you see ghosted players, which when you're running bird's eye, when you see like the big round icon and the direction that person's facing, that means they are not ghosted. If you see like the normal little, um, I guess that's what a diamond shaped little icon, the little like normal UAV icons. If you just pop one and you see people show up, that's the icon that will show up if someone is ghosted. So you just need to make sure if you're the only one running it on your team to start marking and be like, okay, you guys see one person here, but there are actually three guys in that building. So just pay attention to that. Um, yeah. So that's very, very important. It's an absolute requirement. One person on your team has to be running bird's eye. So if you're random filling ranked or something, run bird's eye. That's going to be the most important thing. It sucks not having high alert. Uh, it's not great, but it just, it is so, so helpful to have. Because there are times where we'll pop a UAV and there will be like three or four ghosted people in one area that my teammates didn't know about. And so you have to relay that information to them. So I think <clears throat> it's kind of dumb having all three people run it like most of these guys do. But they don't really, I don't know, they're playing with different people all the time. They don't really have strategy in mind they're kind of just like chimps that just push everything and can win gunfights so it doesn't matter even if someone's ghosting and pops up they're going to kill them either way but for you guys listening it is very very important so one person run bird's eye and then the other two people probably just run high alert or something uh it, it's like sniping it's really nice to have one person with high alert since you're always together in ranked play if your teammate's getting high alert you're usually right next to them, so you, that information is going to be valuable to you as well. So, uh, just make sure to have one bird's eye. That's what I have to say. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I remember last time I ran with you, you did. You were the only person running bird's eye, and we popped the UAV. And sure enough, you were like, "Oh, there's a team in this building." And Jake and I just wouldn't have known that because mm -hmm. we were running high alert. And for that reason, we killed that team. Um, mm -hmm. That's true. And in fact, yeah, yesterday, none of us were running bird's eye. I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me that no one was running it because I was running high alert. Yeah. And uh, I got down to some ghosted kid. He just ran right up to all three of us and downed me. Yeah. And we had no idea he was there. And we ended up killing him. That guy was a fucking idiot. I, we were on the beach. Like, he ran over a hill and there was no other color. No other cover i don't know what he was thinking but we had a uav popped and he wasn't on it because he was ghosted if that was a full team we probably just lose the game there and it only would have been because none of us had bird's eye we were just lucky it was only one guy who either yeah. had the stealth vest or ghost whatever it was uh so yeah the the top 250 strat is to loot for a stealth vest and have bird's eye as your perk um yeah for everyone and yeah i think uh i think i agree with tanner I, at least one person really does need to be running it um i still don't know how the interaction works with bird's eye and your stronghold sweeps have you figured that out yet um yeah i haven't noticed i feel like i feel like it doesn't show Ghosted gamers. Ghosted players. Even if you have a lot of times, yeah. though, people going to the strongholds usually because they don't have a loadout, so they usually don't have perks anyway. Yeah, it's usually not relevant. Yeah, I was just curious. So, I don't know. So the one thing I don't know, I'm not sure what the confirmation is. I've heard though that the ghost vest bird's eye cannot detect someone with the ghost vest like that's like a different level of ghost i've never i i wish when we just had all these answers in warzone when that's just like not the case anymore i don't know why it feels like people that used to test this shit also just test it far less like jgod would be someone in warzone one that would make a video on this and like people just don't anymore true. it's weird true i don't know why that is i think they've just gotten it's sick too much of work for what 
Like why J God can just like random spectate solos and get three million views on his yeah, video. Yeah, exactly. What's or the make a meta point? setup. Yeah. If Infinity Ward doesn't want to tell us anything, why should he? I and I support him. Good for him. Get your AdSense. But you're right. Yeah, no one tests this shit anymore. No one cares. I think there's just too much to keep up with. It's it's exhausting. Well, and the devs don't know because so you can't ask them either. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. it's like um. Yeah, let me feature. see if I can find it in here. If if we uh, wanted to very strictly analyze, if we wanted to take literally what the bird's eye perk does, then it fa in fact would not work on the stealth vest, because bird's eye the perk says explicitly, you will see players who have ghost equipped on your UAV. That exactly. does not mean players who have the stealth vest equipped. So if yeah. you, I wouldn't be surprised if you couldn't see people with the stealth vest. Yes, and so Stealth Vest in the Season 4 Reloaded patch note, it says, a rare armor plate carrier that protects the players from UAVs and other targeting devices. Like, it would be so simple if they put a note somewhere by the Stealth Vest when they put that on the patch notes or by Bird's Eye to say, like, oh, does not work against Stealth Vest users right. or something, but it's just they don't. It they don't do easy. this. Yes. Uh, so Bird's Eye says exactly in the patch notes, when using a UAV in combination with Bird's Eye, players under the effect of Ghost are now revealed to that player. So yeah, it doesn't talk about the stealth vest. So I think a stealth vest does, it does protect you from bird's eye too. Yeah. But I just don't know. They don't tell us and no one tests they these don't. things and no one questions anything either. They just, I don't know. They just play the game and don't think about anything, I guess. Yeah. Yep. That's what I'm saying. The best players in the game are also the ones that just don't use their brains, it seems, and ever question anything. I don't know. They're too busy killing people. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's... It, the juice isn't worth the squeeze, really. I mean, like, yeah, what what is Symphony going to do? You know, stop his grind to go, like, make a custom lobby to test it? And then maybe yeah, and the rules need... are different in custom lobbies than pubs anyway. And maybe yeah. the rules in pubs are different in ranked. So it's like, what the fuck's he going to do? Is it? It's not yeah. worth it for him, you know? It's just like, fuck That's it, the thing, yeah, know. you can't test things in private matches because they're always, it's always different it's in like Warzone. Different it always has been. Yeah. Do they mean it to be different? No, I don't think so. It just ends up being different. It's always like a, an older patch. It doesn't get all the things. I mean, Warzone 1, for the longest time, remember, to revive in private matches, it took like twice as long. Yeah. Is it twice as long or twice as fast? But it was a totally yeah, was different longer. time to revive. Yeah. And, yeah. So weird. It's just completely different. Yep. Yeah. But anyways, if someone can... I don't want someone just telling me in Discord, oh, it works this way. If you've seen proof of someone that's made a video or like someone smart that I would trust that has made a tweet, let us know because I don't know exactly how these work. And I don't want you just saying, oh, no, it does work this way because I don't trust you, whoever you are. So link me proof. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, but either way, d d no matter how it works, you still want bird's eye because uh, at least someone. Yeah, for the reasons Tanner was saying. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's it for today. We just kind of wanted to talk about ranked. Um, Tanner's going for what fucking crimson this season. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't been playing much this week, so I don't know. Who who knows? <clears throat> Yeah, we'll see. It just all comes... I know I could hit it if I played. It's just if I end up wanting to play it or not. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, we will revisit this topic, I'm sure, at some point pretty soon. Um, and next week, once again, we have the reveal event. Next week's going to be an exciting-ass week because we're going to get the reveal event. We are probably, at, at the very least, going to get some info on Fortress. If not, the map will drop itself. Uh, either of which will be very fun and exciting. The reveal event, I think, is the, the main very exciting thing. Although, again, we shouldn't be excited because we're not really going to learn anything. But, it, you know, whatever. We'll get swept up in the hype. See some fun discourse on the TL. Uh, but for Fortress, I actually do expect we get a roadmap blog post. Or, uh, excuse me, just a blog post on it like a couple days before we get it. So, for what you said for the map yeah so i'm actually kind of not expecting it next week unless it's late next week because i think we will get its own dedicated blog post like we got for uh ashika and vondal yeah um so i wouldn't expect to see fortress on like tuesday for example so anyway uh yeah next week will be exciting though keep your 
Keep your little eyes and fucking ears on our Twitter and Discord. Join them. Links are everywhere. Uh, what else was I going to say? We got a lot of fun Patreon content coming up soon as well. Patreon.com slash the drop shot. Five bucks a month. All of our Call of Duty bonus content. Ad-free episodes. Early access episodes. Only five bucks a month. Stay humble. Stay humble.